Richard Feynman once said, I think I can safely say that nobody understands quantum mechanics. What we see when we look at the world seems to be fundamentally different from what it actually is. This is quantum mechanics. It's a theory that explains how tiny things like atoms and molecules work together to make up the world we see and experience. It's the reason we have things like cell phones, supercomputers, DVDs, MRIs, digital cameras, quantum computers, and PDFs. It has revolutionized industries such as finance, transportation, entertainment, etc. But quantum mechanics has taught us more than just how to make electronics. It's taught us that the world isn't always as it appears. From its origin in the mid-1920s to the present day, this field has continually challenged our perceptions of reality. Quantum mechanics was fully developed in the mid-1920s. The concept of quantum uncertainty really shook up the world. In 1927, a German physicist named Werner Heisenberg made a big discovery. He found out that you can't measure both the position and velocity of a tiny particle at the same time. If you measure one, you can't be sure about the other. This idea, known as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, changed the way people thought about the universe. It was even more revolutionary than Einstein's theory of relativity. Heisenberg's discovery was just one of many surprises in the world of quantum physics. In 1900, Max Planck found out that light and other types of radiation come in packets, which he called quanta. A few years later, Albert Einstein said that light travels as packets, or particles, which we now call photons. In 1913, Niels Bohr used quantum theory to explain how atoms are structured. This made people realize that they needed to rethink reality. By 1921, more people started to learn about quantum physics. That year, the first popular explanation of quantum theory was published by William D. Harkins. He said that quantum theory is really important because it explains how matter and radiation interact. It helps us understand electricity, chemical reactions, and how matter responds to heat. Traditional physics says that atoms and their parts can move in many different ways. But quantum theory says that only certain movements actually happen. So, things that we thought happened continuously actually happen in steps. In 1925, Heisenberg made another big contribution. He found a way to represent the energies of electrons in atoms using a type of math called matrix algebra. This became known as matrix mechanics. Around the same time, Erwin Schrödinger developed a different equation for electron energies. He thought of electrons as waves instead of particles. This approach, called wave mechanics, turned out to be mathematically the same as Heisenberg's approach. So, the term quantum mechanics was used to describe the math for all tiny particles. But there was still some confusion. It wasn't clear how electrons could be both particles and waves. In 1927, Niels Bohr came up with a new idea called complementarity to explain this. Bohr suggested that the ideas of particles and waves are both needed to fully understand tiny things like electrons. Whether an electron acts like a particle or a wave depends on how you're looking at it. If you use a tool that's designed to find a particle, you'll find a particle. If you use a tool that's designed to find a wave, you'll find a wave. Around the same time, Heisenberg came up with his uncertainty principle. This principle says that just like you can't see both the wave and particle nature of an electron at the same time, you also can't measure both the position and velocity of a particle at the same time. As physicist Wolfgang Pauli said, this was a big step forward in understanding quantum theory. But this was just the start of the journey into understanding quantum physics. Many physicists, including Einstein, were not happy with the implications of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Introduced in 1927, this principle makes it impossible to precisely predict the outcomes of atomic observations. You could only predict probabilities for different possible outcomes using calculations based on the wave function introduced by Schrödinger. Einstein famously said that he didn't believe that God would play dice with the universe. He also didn't like the idea that a physicist could change reality just by deciding what kind of measurement to make. 
he believed that reality existed independently of human observations. This led to a series of discussions between Bohr and Einstein, known as the Bohr-Einstein debate. In 1935, Einstein, along with Nathan Rosen and Boris Podolsky, proposed a thought experiment that they believed showed that quantum mechanics couldn't be a complete theory of reality. Podolsky explained that a complete theory should have a mathematical counterpart for every element of the physical world. In other words, there should be a quantum wave function for the properties of every physical system. But if two systems, each described by a wave function, interact and then separate, quantum mechanics doesn't allow us to calculate the wave function of each system after the separation. In technical terms, the two systems become entangled, a term coined by Schrödinger. So, they argued, quantum math can't describe all elements of reality and is therefore incomplete. Bohr responded by saying that Einstein and his colleagues' criterion for physical reality was ambiguous in quantum systems. They assumed that a system, like an electron, had definite values for certain properties, like its momentum, before those values were measured. But Bohr explained that quantum mechanics kept different possible values for a particle's properties until one of them was measured. You couldn't assume the existence of an element of reality without specifying an experiment to measure it. Einstein didn't give up. He agreed that the uncertainty principle was correct in terms of what could be observed in nature, but he insisted that some hidden aspect of reality still determined the course of physical events. In the early 1950s, physicist David Baum developed a theory of hidden variables that brought back determinism to quantum physics, but it didn't make any predictions that were different from the standard quantum mechanics math. Einstein wasn't impressed with Baum's work. He told his friend Born, that way seems too cheap to me. Einstein died in 1955, and Bohr in 1962, and neither of them gave in to the other. It seemed like their dispute couldn't be resolved, since experiments would give the same results either way. But in 1964, physicist John Stuart Bell came up with a theorem about entangled particles that allowed experiments to test the possibility of hidden variables. From the 1970s onward, experiment after experiment confirmed the predictions of standard quantum mechanics. In the end, nature itself overruled Einstein's objection. Many physicists weren't comfortable with Bohr's interpretation of quantum mechanics, known as the Copenhagen interpretation. In 1957, physicist Hugh Everett III proposed a different idea. He said that an experiment doesn't create one reality from many quantum possibilities. Instead, it only identifies one branch of reality. All the other possibilities exist on other branches, all equally real. We only perceive our own branch, just like we're not aware of the Earth's rotation. In simple terms, every possible outcome of a quantum event actually occurs in its own separate universe. This idea, called the many worlds interpretation, was initially ignored, but later gained popularity. Since then, many other interpretations of quantum theory have been proposed. Some focus on the reality of the wave function, which is the mathematical expression used to predict the odds of different possibilities. Others focus on how the math describes the knowledge about reality that we can gain from experiments. Some interpretations try to reconcile the many worldviews with the fact that we only perceive one reality. In the 1980s, physicists like H. Dieter and Wojcik Zarek highlighted the importance of a quantum system's interaction with its environment, a process called quantum decoherence. Some of a particle's many possible realities quickly disappear as it interacts with matter and radiation around it. Soon, only one of the possible realities will remain consistent with all the environmental interactions. This explains why we only perceive one reality on the human scale of time and size. This insight led to the consistent history's interpretation, developed by Robert Griffiths and further elaborated by Murray Gell-Mann and James Hartle. This interpretation is well known among physicists, but it hasn't gained much popularity outside of that community and hasn't stopped the search for other interpretations. Scientists are still trying to understand what quantum math means for the nature of reality. In the 1990s, the study of quantum information theory became more prominent. Physicist John Archibald Wheeler 
a student of Bohr, had long emphasized that specific realities emerge from the fog of quantum possibilities through irreversible amplifications. For example, an electron definitely establishes its location by leaving a mark after hitting a detector. Wheeler suggested that reality as a whole could be built up from such processes. He compared these processes to yes or no questions. Like is the electron here? The answers correspond to bits of information, the ones and zeros used by computers. Wheeler coined the phrase it from a bit to describe the link between existence and information. One of Wheeler's former students, Benjamin Schumacher, took this idea further. He came up with the concept of a quantum version of the classical bit of information. He introduced the quantum bit, or qubit, at a conference in Dallas in 1992. Schumacher's concept of a quantum bit, or qubit, laid the foundation for building computers that could process quantum information. This idea of quantum computers had been imagined by physicists like Paul Benioff, Richard Feynman, and David Deutsch. In 1994, mathematician Peter Shaw showed that a quantum computer using qubits could break the most secure codes, sparking a race to design and build powerful quantum computers. By the early 21st century, basic quantum computers had been built. The latest models can perform some tasks, but they're not yet powerful enough to make current encryption methods obsolete. However, for certain types of problems, quantum computing may soon outperform traditional computers. The development of quantum computing hasn't resolved the debate over the interpretation of quantum mechanics. Deutsch thought that quantum computers would support the many worlds interpretation, but not many others agree. Decades of quantum experiments haven't provided any support for new interpretations. All the results align with the expectations of traditional quantum mechanics. Quantum systems keep different possible values for certain properties until one is measured, just as Bohr insisted. But no one is completely satisfied. Perhaps because Einstein's theory of gravity, another fundamental pillar of 20th century physics, doesn't fit into the framework of quantum theory. For many years, the search for a quantum theory of gravity has been unsuccessful, despite many promising ideas. A recent approach suggests that the geometry of space-time, which is the source of gravity in Einstein's theory, might somehow be constructed from the entanglement of quantum entities. If this is true, the strange behavior of the quantum world can't be understood in terms of ordinary events in space and time because quantum reality creates space-time instead of just existing within it. If this is the case, we humans are observing an artificial, emergent reality that appears to consist of events happening in space and time, while the true, inaccessible reality doesn't have to follow the rules of space-time. This view somewhat echoes the teachings of Pomenides, an ancient Greek philosopher who said that all change is an illusion. He believed that our senses show us the way of seeming, and that only logic and reason can reveal the way of truth. Pomenides didn't come to this conclusion by doing math, he said a goddess explained it to him. But he was a key figure in the history of science because he started using rigorous deductive reasoning and trusted it even when it led to conclusions that contradicted sensory experience. However, as some other ancient Greeks realized, the world of the senses can provide clues about the reality we can't see. As Anaxagoras said, phenomena are a sight of the unseen. In modern terms, as Sean Carroll puts it, the world as we experience it is certainly related to the world as it really is. But the relationship is complicated, he says, and it's real work to figure it out. In fact, it took 2,000 years of hard work for the Greek revolution in explaining nature to evolve into Newtonian science's mechanistic understanding of reality. Three centuries later, quantum physics brought about a comparable revolution in science's understanding of reality. But the lack of agreement on what it all means suggests that science might need to dig a little deeper. In our ongoing quest to understand quantum mechanics, let's stay curious and open-minded. Every discovery brings new questions and exciting possibilities. Let's keep exploring, learning, and marveling at the wonders of the universe. The journey never ends.